Yeah, welcome to another exciting episode of The Energy That Surrounds Us. I'm your host, Michael. As always, joined by my awesome co-host and media extraordinaire, Carla. Hey, everyone. So tonight we have a special treat for you all. We have a really super cool guest that we are so privileged to have with us tonight, Russ Kellett. Yay! So, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, Russ? Um, Michael, hi, Carla. How you doing? Well, yeah. Um, basically, I'm in my late fifties. I was born in West Yorkshire. Uh, in a an industrial uh, town, well, um, a city called Bradford. I uh, I was born and raised there until the 20, uh, 22 years ago. So now I'm on the East Coast, which is, uh, you know, in the north area of the North Sea. And... Uh, there's been quite a lot of things that have happened over here. One of uh, the incidents going back into the 70s was uh, a pilot called Schaffner. And he was an exchange pilot. And he was... And the last that the leave was this pilot saying that he was chasing after a UFO. And basically, that were it. That they found the aircraft in the sea, the North Sea, which is about 20, 20 miles from where I live here in, in Filey. And when they opened the canopy, the pilot, well enough, his name as well was William. So William Shaftner, you know, sort of like wow, you know, so that if if you have a look, if you put that incident in, it will be like the uh, if you if you go Google it, it'll four, I think, if I remember right. So studying skating. After I'd had uh, a close encounter when I was living over in West Yorkshire in Bradford, that's why I was over here looking in the area. But um, I'll, I'll go back a little bit before this, anyway. Uh, when I was younger, why I got started, I suppose, in, in all this. And when I was about four years old, I was looking upstairs for presents in the bedroom in the back bedroom grandma and granda's bedroom like because we knew that christmas presents always used to be kept there <laughs> it, must have been a, it must have been a drop-off point for santa claus you know that's what we always said anyway but you know me and my sister knew so i were looking for this i think it was back a bit a big one or something we're only about four years old and my mum and me um grandma were shouting they were downstairs. Come on, what are you doing upstairs? And, oh, I'm in the bathroom. You know, I'm in the toilet, lying. You know, anyway, so I made my way from behind of the bed and we're walking out, you know, of the door, just about to go through the door. And there's a window in front of me. And I'm looking down and I see this man. Well, I have to take it with a man because he had an helmet on. And like a grey suit, like a pilot suit. And there's this silver shape behind. And this is up the back street, just over um, like the gate. There's like a, 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 a what you call it, a, a back um, like street that comes up where the uh, dustbins used to come up for your dustbins. 
so I'm looking at this and I, I'm I'm thinking, you know, it's don't dust me, man. And I'm thinking it's got an helmet on. It's a spaceman. It must be a spaceman. So I'm looking and I'm shouting, yeah, and waved. And this this thing had put its hand up like so. And um, when I looked and shouted, you know, I'm coming down. I looked again and it started walking backwards and it was just behind, just going behind this silver object and it started juddering and going up a bit, you know, like so. And then my mum shouted this time, come on now, get down here. I don't know what you're doing up there. And I looked, it had gone, you know. So I went next door into the bathroom and then... Uh, I think I pulled chain or something and then run downstairs. And my mum was saying, what have you been doing up there? We've been calling of you, you know. And I thought, I better not tell her, you know, what I've just seen. Because, she, I've, you know, I've been in the back bedroom. And my grandma did say it'll have been lucky in this present. So, ooh. you know, so I thought I better not say anything, <laughs> you know, so... Smart. You know, I don't know. So the next time uh, when I came across something, uh, you know, uh, to do with this subject, my dad would have uh, come in from work. He'd been on late shift. And it was with, with worked with him and uh, some workmates, and the caution going on, and we just thought, "What's up?" Because he had his back to him, you know. You know what what's going on? And they said, "Oh, look, you know, you've missed it. You missed it, Jim." And they said, "Missed what?" And they said, "What are you for?" And his other brother turned around and says, no, he said, he, he said, I'd say it were a, a torpedo. And um, one of his friends, he cigar shape object. And I says, well, I think it were a, you know. So, so he's telling me mum all, all this. And I remember magazines every week. You know, I think like Spider Man and, and stuff like that. And in books about uh, UFOs and Bermuda Triangle and, and things, you know. So I suppose I'd got a bit of a loss of my dad, you see. Anyway, we was out. I was, this is like 15, 14 now. And we were playing, so it's like um, hide and seek. It's called tin can squat, but it's very similar to hide and seek. And as usual, I'd been the first to get caught. And this was where I lived, just at the top. I lived near the top of the the, the road, the the back road. And then there was a road that came along, um, the, and. Um, I'd been caught, so I was sat on the corner where there used to be um, there used to be like this big garage and it had been pulled down. And there were big nails in out of the ground. You know, sort of like they'd, they pulled it down, but they'd left this big nail sticking. Luckily, I, I'd just about sit on it and sort of like seen it. So I'm there pulling this nail, you know, in ground and looking up in air. And I looked up again. And I couldn't believe my eyes. And there's this massive big ball. And it were like red and white. And it were all segments, you know, like an orange, you know, the segments. Mm. And it were like red, white, red, white, red, white, all the way around. So, wow. uh, 
טוב. אי. Turn around and we'll look out and we're looking for the rest. Of not oil to look, it's a UFO. And this object's moving from left to right. It went from the, the top of the road. There's like a row of houses, and it were about the second house from the beginning. And it went straight across, slow, very slow. And I mean, it was a massive object. And I'm shouting, look, and so now there's all my friends, their heads are popping up over sort of like garden fences and over walls and over gates and behind one or two of the garages. And all of a sudden then, they run and they're at the top of the, the back street now. And they're, they're watching this massive, big object. And uh, one of the one of his friends and his girlfriend, they said, oh, no, it's a UFO. And I'm, well, what is it then? Oh, it's a, it's a balloon. It's, it's a, an air, you know. Um, Hot air balloon? Like a um, weather balloon? Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, you know, like a, a sort of thing. <clears throat> so I said, no, it's not because I said, we've seen them a couple of weeks ago. There are about 20 of them over. Us. There's, there's no, uh, 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 none of the tethers coming down, all because there's no basket there. So it, you know, it can't be. You know, not uh, So, uh, you know. Yep. Looks like the Am I lost him? Out. So, we apologize, folks. There's just some things we just have no control over and if he comes back we'll be sure to continue our episode with him um let's see let's get out of this mode <laughs> oh that one's there that's a better mode up <laughs> oh, here i think he's I back think i hear him There we are. You're back. Maybe. Um, the fun things about doing international shows. <laughs> All the way across. My friends were had run across the road. I and um, I said, "Where is it? they were coming back?" And I said, "Where's it gone?" They said, oh, "Went in a cloud." And one of me said, "We're gonna." Well, I will. I will. 
it was there's a nail sticking out of um BT Uh, well, unfortunately, it looks like due to technical issues, we may not be able to do an episode as we normally would. Right. But this is unfortunate due to the, we can't control the internet in the UK, let alone in the US. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh. So, one of the things that's kind of freakishly going on right now is we actually have ice on the ground over here. How about you over there? Do you have ice, Carla, or is it just snow? Oh, yeah. Thick ice, and it sounds like tomorrow from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. Thursday, we're going to get another half inch to three quarters of an inch of ice. We're supposed to have a bad ice storm in our yeah. area. But then they reassured us it was going to melt the same on Thursday. So, well, here's Friday for sure. Friday, at least there's sun. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Poor Were Bryce. we able to get him back? No. I don't know. So, one of the reasons I was looking... There he is. Can you hear us this time? Think we should text him? Um, yeah, I'll message him. Let's see. So the subject matter we were hoping to discuss with Russ and what we were bringing him on the show for was he is a ufologist, which means he studies and investigates UFOs. And he was part of investigating a really famous UFO incident in Britain. So hopefully... We'll be able to get him on and so we can hear some about it. And hopefully the lagging will subside. Yeah. It may have to do with the area, too, that he's in. It could be. But And it could also be the weather being so freakish. Mm -hmm. The one thing I thought was pretty cool, though, is at our investigation the other night when we were having communication with a loved one that passed on and we were actually asking him about, do aliens exist? Oh, yes. And he said, yes. We were using dowsing rods. So they crossed about the aliens when we just asked random questions. Then we asked if the aliens were among us. And it got or have been among us and it crossed, said yes. And then we asked if they look like us, and it was yes. So Wait. that that was just like an extra tidbit of information that we just we were able to capture that i guess the subject matter wasn't what i thought we were gonna turn into but since we had a 
captive audience there. It was kind of neat that somebody had brought up the question. I mean, when you have somebody that's on the other side, I mean, why yeah. not ask them? They have a... Yeah. They can... Ask them anything. <laughs> yeah. Get all yeah. kinds of answers. That was... It was pretty fascinating listening to it all. And so the investigation that Carl and I are talking about while we're hoping to get Russ back on was an investigation for Stephen Woodard and Catherine, is it Gonzalez German? Did uh -huh. I say that right? Yeah. She, they, well, she, they won an investigation with us and that was what we were doing on Saturday night. And so. Yeah, Fort was, Walters, Mineral Wells. And I got to tell you, we got so much stuff that night that we are going to be doing so much research <laughs> to yeah. validate stuff for a long time. Yeah. We were getting all kinds of answers from, what was it? We had a, uh, would you say cavalry soldier, possibly? Yeah. Frontier soldier? Yeah. We had a Native American Mm-hmm. Um we had a how do you how do you say it? Is it because I keep wanting to say Morticia, but it's not Morticia like Morticia, the um Undertaker person. Right. But you were right, Mortician. Oh, okay. Yeah. But does all the embalming and all that stuff. Yeah, and so I got to try a experiment that I've never tried before, which was fun. And Carla got to do a new style of an investigation technique that she loves to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, your human human pendulum. Pendulum. Pendulum was pretty amazing to watch. That we have video and we promise that on, on another show that we'll actually show the footage because it was pretty, pretty amazing, the line of questioning and the responses. Well, actually, you can watch the uh, Human Pendulum video. It's up on my YouTube channel right now. But yes, we will have it in a future episode as well. Hello to everyone. And it looks like Russ is back. So yeah, we'll Russ, let's try and get him back. Left off. Hi. Hey, Russ. Hi. Wow. Welcome back. This is going on. Hi. Uh, <laughs> so. Were you always into UFOs as a little kid growing up, or was it because of your incident that you became interested? Yeah. Yes to all? Did Back we lose you again? Uh, Can you hear us? I think. Yeah, you can say that again. Well, I can <laughs> yeah, everything's working here now. Okay. Okay. You talk, talking, you know. Hi.
I think we're losing you again. I think we're lost. Can you hear us? Right. You might have to reschedule Russ or pre tape it. Although Joe says the sound is good, so maybe it's just. Is it not? It's so. The sound is good. The sound is good for the guest. For can you hear the guest yeah. well? Is there a delay? To anyone in the audience, Joe. Joe, do you hear a delay? Can you help us out? Can you hear perfect? So unfortunately, we're hearing a little bit of lag, so it may be because of the bad weather here. I, I'm, I guess if everyone's hearing. Can you put some of those comments up? Uh, let's see. It might be uh, lingering. Oop. No, Stephen. No, he's in not, the UK, not Stephen. Out, not out your way. Yeah, Stephen says huge delay. Yeah. No. We're sorry, everyone. Hey. Yeah. Well, just keeps on cutting out every every so often. Yes. And now we've lost him. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Russ is for everyone that's just joining into the show. Russ Kellett is from the UK area and ufologist he's an author he was an abductee and part of the secret space program and so we were hoping to have him on here so that we could talk to him about all of this and it's looking like we may have to reschedule yeah because unfortunately with our bad weather and well, yeah it could be a little of both it could be a little of both because they kept telling us that we're going to have issues because of the ice so yeah so if y'all are interested we can go back to while we're waiting for him talking about investigations or stuff um Irene, I'm doing well, actually, staying warm with the ice. How, how is everyone in the audience doing? Hey, Catherine. Steven says, I can. Well, Steven, as long as you can hear us, that's what's important. <laughs> <laughs> Our number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I'm glad you're doing all right, Joe. And Irene says, loved your investigation on the doll. I wish it was longer. We do too, but the temperature actually started to drop. Yeah. 
We'll do hey, it again. Catherine. I bet you are feeling a little chilly. Hey. <laughs> it's chilly. Steven says, let's talk Fort Walters. Okay. Let's so, do that. <laughs> totally have our attention with that. <laughs> so those of you who have seen, we did lives there where mm -hmm. we did the human pendulum experiment. We did what I call dueling. Uh, Estes method. Estes method and dowsing rods. Yes. And we had, it wasn't live, but we did did do a dowsing rod session in the doll room of the px uh -huh. in which we contacted a dear friend of ours who's on the other side and had a really touching conversation and yes. let's see joe asks did you guys ever use a ghost box um we used we used the we, we used the SP7. Box. Yeah, I think we used a spirit box for that one. Hey, for Nikki. What one? For what one? For the STs. Instead of ghost box, we use a spirit box. Yeah, the SP7, spirit box 7. Yeah. Steven says it's the double STs method. The double. Sounds more fun with dueling, though. <laughs> but Dueling. yes. So, <laughs> what the doubles Estes method that we're talking about is Carla was on headphones plugged into an SB7, and mm -hmm. Victoria, our friend who was there, was also plugged into the same Spirit Box 7. And they were both responding to questions that they couldn't hear. And there were times where Carla would start something and Victoria would finish it. Or they would both have different, like, kind of random answers, but still key to what we were talking about. And so it was kind of fun to watch. And it sounded um, like by talking to um, some of the other investigators that we were saying the same thing at the same time at times. It did seem like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't have perspective because I only got to hear one part of the conversation, but um, at least it was recorded. Yes. That everybody can listen to and watch. It's pretty and amazing. Steven, you're right. Uh, we were all teared up and it did get emotional in the doll room for a little yeah. while. It was a really unique opportunity to talk with a friend's loved one that was on the other side and to see how he was manipulating the dowsing rods, just words can't even explain how touching and empowering and yet still validating at the uh -huh. same time. It was like, man, and we all got the opportunity to ask questions. It, it's just a little backstory on that. Um, the the wife was with us, and her favorite investigative tool of choice is the dowsing rod. And so, for whatever reason, um, when she was using her own dowsing rods, um, she wasn't quite getting much of the responses when all of us were sitting in the doll room um, just wasn't getting a, a reaction from the rods much. And so she handed them over to me asking for me to try. And 
from that point on for the next almost an hour and a half, it was like an hour and 15 minutes or so. It was just a conversation with him to her with um, different people asking questions within the room, but it validated a lot of things that she's always wanted to know. And then off topic subjects that we wanted to know, like the alien questions and things that you would think about, like, do, do you sleep or eat or, you know, that type of questioning that we don't know. I mean, that you would just think, do you, do you have to, is, is there like a, a process or is it a regimented day or do you, is it just, and so the answers we were getting were just amazing. And there was a lot of, a lot of emotion, a lot of tearing up, um, but she was ecstatic, just overwhelmingly happy by the time we were done with that session. It was amazing. I think we're going to post that one too as well, right? Yes, we're looking at getting a copy of that to where I can post it on the my yeah. YouTube channel as well. Yeah. And we will look at getting the double SDs and double, mm -hmm. um, what do you call it, dowsing rod session that we did with Chelsea as well. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that I'll kind of share with you all right now is, so the doll room is on one side of the, of the PX building. And when we did the human pendulum, we were on the exact opposite side of the building in the poker room. Mm -hmm. And the Chelsea doll is actually just like diagonal to the poker room. So we were in the haunted sex haunted house section of the PX building in the maze. And ooh, Catherine says I can post it on mine as well, but I wanted to check with Eileen to make sure she was okay with it and that everyone was okay with it. Um that's a good idea, yeah. Catherine, but if you can post it, that would be awesome. Yeah. Catherine was there and yeah. She was taking a lot of cool photos too. I know that Eileen, I asked Eileen if she wanted a copy of it. Well, actually, she reached out and said that she would like a copy. So I sent that to her today and she was able to listen to it and was very appreciative of having that. Um, for her, but yeah, I think it's like uh, Kath Catherine said, is that we need to check before we post. Right. Because as cool as it was, it is still a personal. Mm -hmm. Need to be respectful. So, and also just reiterating and throwing this out there for people is the Fort Walters base is a very cool location to investigate. The best thing to do is to reach out to Shauna. She's the caretaker of the building, and she will happily schedule with you an investigation. And who knows? You might even get to see Carla or I there because we go and investigate there quite a bit. Uh -huh. And let's see, what are some of the other cool places to check out in the PX building? There's a room that's attributed to a uh, tribute to the old Nazareth Hospital, which is where we met Shauna. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Why don't we talk about the um, the uh, uh, Chelsea, the vessel doll? All right. So I don't know how that conversation went. That was kind of a cool conversation. 
We will. Let me see. It looks like Russ is good to go. So let's see if we can get him on. Okay. And if not, then we'll go to Chelsea. <laughs> hey. How you uh, doing? I think your mic is muted. Um, Joe, yes, we are. And we will talk about that on another episode. <laughs> uh, Russ, can you hear us? Gonna send him a message. He can hear us, but we can't hear him. He's checking the mic. We can't hear you. I think we got him. Let's see. As I like to say, folks, this is the fun of having a live show. <laughs> Nothing like ad living through a through a podcast. Let's <laughs> <laughs> cap. Uh, yeah, right. Exactly, yep. Catherine. <laughs> yep, Catherine. She was talking to me about that. You know, the common link between the shows is you, Catherine. <laughs> hey, but your mic is still working, so don't jinx it. I know. Uh... <laughs> yes, we I agree, hear, Stephen. We, we can't hear Russ. <laughs> What'd she say? She said, no. <laughs> So hopefully we'll get his mic working soon. In the meantime, I agree with Stephen. Fort Walters is a hidden gem of a haunted location. So I'll give Agreed. you guys a little back history of it. Is in the 1500s, 1600s, while the Spanish were exploring. They had conquistadors exploring nearby in the area. And then the Native American tribes settled in there, and there were uh, plenty of Indian battles, raids, frontier battles, conflicts. Then turned to World War I, where it was known as Camp Walters. Uh-huh. And then we go to World War II, where it becomes known as Fort Walters. And Lieutenant Green and Audie Murphy, who are the two highest decorated soldiers of World War II, both trained there. Yep. Audie Murphy, everyone knows, is the most trained. Or not the most trained, the, the highest decorated Right. The most decorated. And he um, also was where the worst soldier of World War II was trained. Mm -hmm. And so have a little bit of, you know, equilibrium there. You got the best and the worst. So, you know, you never know what's going to come out of the base. And across the street from the PX was where the German POW barracks were, where the German soldiers were kept. And so then it sat dormant for a while. And then in <coughs> Vietnam, they brought the most of the pilots who flew helicopters to train there. They built Beach Army Hospital for the families of the soldiers that were there. And after Vietnam, it pretty much remained Fort Walters, but it was decommissioned as yeah. a base. However, the 
Army National Guard, if I'm not mistaken, still utilizes half of the base. So it's not fully decommissioned. But so with all the training of World War II, the Frontier, World War I, the POWs, there is a lot of opportunity to talk with a wide range of spirits at Fort Walters and Mineral Wells. So we both truly recommend if you guys get a chance to get over there, you really need to put it on your bucket list. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just, it's not just uh, the base, the, the PX and the bank. It's, um, it's a, it's got the energy from um, the Army Beach Hospital there. It's got uh, Cherokee. Um, Comanche. Yeah, Comanche, Cherokee type uh, energy there. And um, it also has a lot of the objects and therefore energy from the Nazareth Hospital in there. So you've got got a lot going on in that in that space and we also she does have objects from world war ii mm -hmm. and i don't know if she has german objects for the pow's or not but we also there is a oddities museum mm -hmm. in the bank building where there's a lot of objects that are from different time periods and there's uniforms there and so there's a lot to see and a lot to experience and there are quite possibly attachments there to objects joe yes um, carl and i did come across a laughing doll which we didn't get to hear this past saturday night but i'm not complaining with what we did here <laughs> i i was just on such a high after what we experienced saturday night that the the doll laughing was the least of my <laughs> concerns yeah. or wants at that point in time <laughs> we tried to get a hold of the doll laugh but we, uh, oh, Stephen corrected me. It's the Texas National Guard still uses the back part for training. Yeah, there's a lot of training grounds and buildings and stuff like that back there. So, Joe, as promised, the vessel doll known as Chelsea. So, she got her name Chelsea from the fact that. If you're a fan of Destination Fear, when they were investigating the, the Nazareth. Nazareth Hospital, mm -hmm. Chelsea was in the basement in the doll room, and the doll was, I believe, suspended from the air near the wall. Yeah. Or She's might have corner. been stapled to the wall. But while Ch Chelsea was in there, this black mass appeared behind the doll and it startled Chelsea and she was freaked out and went out and um, Catherine just watched the episode. So she's correcting, she's verifying it was on a chair in the air. Right. And so because of the notoriety that you know it freaked out Chelsea Layden on Destination Fear is how it got oh. the name Chelsea. Yeah, and we have been trying to determine what the spirit's spirit real name, name is, and we recently, in a conversation with the doll, found out it is a she. She wants oh, her old dress and oh. her old hair back. Russ? Yeah. Hey, we can hey. hear Russ now. You're back. Yeah. 
just fixed it. Oh my just, gosh, that sounds so much better. It's a brand new computer, is this? So, but I hadn't set it up, you see, so I've just realized. Much better. Okay, you guys are going to have to wait. It's like part two of our anyway. <laughs> investigation. We'll be on another episode. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry to leave you hanging. <laughs> yeah. Yay. We, we were looking forward to talking with you about your UFO investigations, your... <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> um, <Captain. laughs> yay! Have we got? Uh, have we got about five minutes now? <laughs> yeah. Well, we we can go a little bit longer, but not too much long. <laughs> um, but one question I would like to ask you from your experience: Is there like a certain energy or like a resonance? vibration you feel when the ufos are around oh yeah yeah you can sense you know sort of like you just you, you can actually sense that they're around uh so much that uh, when i've got my camera with me you know sort of like i'll just turn it around and start filming and if you have a look on i think it's uh i'm just trying to think now whether it's uh Flying Saucer Television or UFO Paranormal TV on YouTube, you'll see some of the uh, videos that I uh, I started going out and videoing these things. I said to my friend, oh, you're always seeing things and filming. You know, I said, oh, yeah. And my other friend said to me, he said, well, that's because you haven't got a camera. He says, why don't you get one? So I started going out with a, a video camera um, uh, with night vision and what have you and uh, filming. And when I was with a friend, it was disabled in my group. Uh, and I said to him, here, Keith, go and have a look. And I'm handing him camera. And as I'm handing him the camera, there's a flash and I can feel this power going down my body and back up it, you know. And uh, so I, I said, give us cam camera back a minute, you know. And I carried on filming this, uh, this UFO. And uh, when we weren't in, in the house, excuse me, I'm all bunged up with flu. <clears throat> but when I went back in the house and rewound the, the, the video, the tape, you can see me getting zapped by six balls of light at, come down in one flash in a split second i think it's like 60 60 frames a second uh 60 frames a minute i should say uh and you can see that there's these balls of light coming down and moving up where the the lens is and i'm at the end of the lens you've got to remember that uh and it's a, a quick flash and there is a, a sound and I had um, somebody, you know, uh, basically saying, I've seen that video, it's rubbish. You've turned the night vision on and that's what the noise is. There's, a, there's a, like a click. And I said, no, I said, because if you have a look, the night vision's already on. I'm filming in night vision. Oh, well, it's been turned off. And I said, well, no, because if you have a look, the night vision's still on. You know, you've always get, they're not skeptics and they're not debunkers, they're haters. So that's, that's one, me getting zapped. Then um, I filmed uh, what, in, nine, in 2000, it looks like a man falling out of the sky called uh, flying, uh, flying Man or Ejector Seat. But that actual object flew across the sky where I was stood and my friend were looking out of his door and he had binoculars and it came down. The next day I went and had a look for the object and on two photographs, I've actually got a flying triangle looking around this area where it came down. Um, 
then on that uh, on YouTube, I've filmed uh, two flying triangles come out at sea, out of the bay here where I live, and take off. And I film it for like 20 minutes. At first, I thought it was one of those. I said B-52 and I meant B-2 bombers because people are supposed to be in the know have said that they can basically um, do some incredible things, these B-2 bombers. And, I've, you know, I've heard all sorts that they can almost hover and all sorts and go, real, you know, I don't know. You're always getting them, don't you? Uh, and so I'm thinking, well, could it be, you know, uh, one of these, you know, e exotic spa spacecraft? And when I'm filming, when I'm looking, and I'm I'm taking my eyes off the ball looking, and I can't believe what I'm seeing. And I'm I'm witnessing two flying triangles back side by side, coming out of the bay, and there's a road right next. To where it's coming out of the sea and it can't be more than um, 200 feet away from the side of the road whoops and i filmed that for 20 minutes oh my gosh and all the time i was filming that there were things coming down and um like um, trying to connect with it and what have you because I started filming these other things that were coming down out of the sky. And then I went missing for an hour when I came in, you know, sort of like my mum and my sister were, where have you been? You've been a long time, you know. You said you're going out for an hour. I've been out an hour. Ooh, yeah. Um, my friend, he came for an holiday down the road. Um which is where I told you where this um, aeroplane went missing and landed in the sea and the pilot disappeared. About 10 miles the opposite direction, lower down, he's filming up here and he films a ball of light and then a second ball of light appears and two flying triangles come out of the night sky um, as in coming out of the clouds because of a low level clouds. So this ball is very bright and it's below cloud level. And then these cloud, these clouds are just above and these two flying triangles just come down. One goes back up into another bank of clouds and this other flying triangle actually rams into this ball of light actually rams it like so and this ball of light moves back like so and then it, it takes off and it, it goes to smash into it and it it moves out of its way again and then the flying triangle goes back into clouds and then all of a sudden some more balls of light turn up and go into this uh, craft you wow. know so like um, a red ball of light turns up and goes inside it and as it comes down and he's filmed this for an hour this is a friend that were in my group and as it comes down now low to the ground like rockets shoot up to it people have said did you see that did you see that i said yeah so right underneath just as it's above these objects come up towards it like so but they don't touch it they sort of like fade out so people say that have seen the, the actual uh, object could have been uh, like um, ground to wear missiles there's a school of thought that says could there be people that have been abducted could the ball of light been hanging around and it's been ready to abduct people. And is that what the flying triangle were doing? Were it trying to attack? Because there's no doubt, there's no doubt that it's an actual uh, dogfight in the sky. Wow. Just where I live, just outside where I live here. You know, East Coast. That's amazing. 
I'm so curious. these are the cases that I've been working on. When I moved around here 20 odd years ago, I was already coming over here, listening to people telling me about this area. And I'm filming it myself. I mean, the thing is, it's like you get researchers and they're researching other people's information half the time they get it wrong. I've heard researchers on television, I was just saying today, which really sickens me off quite a lot, where they're in these big groups and they've got people on talking on a chat show and they're abductees and these people, you know, turn around and say, oh, well, we don't believe in abductions. You take the money from the groups, don't you? You know, what they pay to join, but you don't believe. Yeah. You know, make me yeah. sick. You know, the, the, these people will never see anything. They'll, they'll never know anything. You know what I mean? Uh, simple as that. They're not chosen. Don't have money. They're not chosen. So I'm curious. Do you think the craft that you saw were reverse engineered or engineered from, say, like places like Area 51? Or do you think they're intergalactic from, like, Venus, Mars? The Saturn? problem is there is no shred of evidence whatsoever that there's any reverse engineering being done in America or anywhere else for that matter. There's not a shred of evidence, not a, not a shred of, of evidence whatsoever. Hmm. You know, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's just here saying it. It's a, again, it's a theory, you know, I can only give you factual evidence and tell you about what's happened to me and, you know, like when I've been abducted and, you know, put into a military unit and what we've been made to do, you know, and there's a war going on. Yeah. It's not only, you know, sort of like different planets, it's on this planet, it's going on now, all around. And you won't hear about it because of the media. The media won't touch it. No. Yeah. You know, you, you've, you, I, I don't know whether you, you, you know, uh, obviously, you know, we had this three years of nonsense about this uh, virus. And I said, if there was a virus, right, yeah, it was definitely what Trump said. And that was, it was basically set off by the Chinese. Simple as that. There's no getting away from the fact. If it was a virus and, and what have you, you know, sort of like, what a premise to go to war when somebody's attacked your country, you know what I mean, and my country. And instead, what I've got is I've got a prime minister wanting to go to war with Russia over something that nobody's done. I haven't done anything in my country, but yet we know for certain that there were Chinese involved in this, you know, this uh, chemical uh, biological warfare Mm -hmm. And what, what, just let more people in and, and, and spread it. You know, there's, oh, there's, there's more going on in China and it's, it's spreading. And have they stopped anybody from coming into this country? No. These people, how do the minds work? <laughs> <laughs> we had, we, you know, we, we had a guy um, who was, um, who was injected um, and uh, he was poisoned uh, with like nuclear chemicals or whatever. Um, years ago in this country, when by Russians, and I know that, uh, what they call Lip Venko or something, and they're not, they never went to war then, you know what I mean? And uh, again, you know, a, a reason to go to war if you've done something like that in somebody's country and uh, they were like nuclear, you know, sort of like, um, yeah, uh, you know, sort of like, uh, this. Um, well, after effects around the area, you know, sort of like uh, which you could pick up radiation and what have you. But yet we'll go to war when they haven't done anything because uh, they're arguing with the next door neighbour's country. <laughs> Ludicrous. <Yeah. laughs> Ludicrous, you know what I mean? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it's like 
you're not getting any news. There, there, we've, we've had no news in this country for about seven years. You know, we, we were talking the other day, you know, a, a lot of people in the 60s and 70s are saying that there's, what what's the news? We don't have news. Not like we used to, and you used to sit down and watch news. Don't see any news. The only news is what it's bad news, and it's you know what I mean, right? But uh, like I say, you know, I'm going around in circles, but you know, you're not going to find out in America or over here what's going on until it's too late, and it's almost too late, right? So I'm just curious when you you mentioned you're part of the secret space program, or you were a part of it. Were you stationed off-world, or were you stationed here on Earth? Both. There's a planet, I won't mention the, the, the name of the planet, to the aliens that take me, that uh, that's where, basically, my the base is where I, I was stationed. And uh, also, there's places on, on this planet also... Uh, but there's uh, there's so much going on. There's, there's so much going on. It's like each government has like maybe two, three factions, and the the supporting different aliens, different alien races. Um, and you, you you just know about. You've only got to listen to what's going on in politics, where there's people not doing as what they're supposed to do. Right, yeah, by law, and they're not adhering to the way that they're supposed to, you know, sort of like basically uh, to promote themselves and to to do the job what they're doing. In other words, it's all about money, and it's about millions of pounds, and that's what we've got happening over here at the moment. So the thing is. You know, how many people in the government are, are taking money, right, yeah? And what are they taking money from and for? So when you know that, you know, you, you're thinking to yourself, these are the people that have been put in power. They're no better than anybody else. And if they'll do this, and normally somebody would get sort of like at least five years for what they've done. But nothing's going to happen to them mm-hmm. because they're above the law. So when when you know that that's happening and there's all the other things that are happening and nobody's accountable for what, what they're doing in government, you think to yourself, what else is going on? I know what else is going on. And that is that, you know, the, the, their allies with an alien race. So you might have a country that's different factions uh, allies with maybe three alien races just like my country as well mm-hmm. and what are they getting from it you know what are they getting from it originally if we go back to Eisenhower when he was supposed to I mean is it true did he sell everybody out you know this is this is a big question did he sell everybody out did he turn around and, uh, you know, sort of like say you can take a quarter of um, humans for this and for that and for something else. You know, which is a, it's a worry because, you know, if your president's done something like that, you know what I mean? Been fighting Nazis, you know what I mean? Sort of like, you know, better than them. You know what I mean? Right. And what are they doing? What you know, if, if they're taking all these people, what are they doing with the people that they're taking? I know what they're doing. I know they're putting you know people like me and other people into military units, and there's the others, what are they doing with them? Using them as slaves, food. You know, they're not just taking them on holidays, are they? They're not saying, Oh, come over here, come on, you know, you can come. Come for an holiday with us. I don't think so. You know what I mean? It's like when you're abducted, like I said to somebody the other day, it's, 
you know, it's like 15 years. You abduct somebody, take somebody without consent, you get like 15, look if you got 15 years for murder these days, but you know what I mean? It's like taking somebody against the will. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like what is it for you know and i hear all these people are, you know happy clappies oh they're here to save the world well they're not doing a good job you know what i mean sort of like we had two world wars <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean there's, there's a there's a third one on its way you know you'd think they'd pull the finger out and start saying well look let's let's have enough of this you know but they're not nowhere to be seen can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. Um, so this is kind of uh, on, a, on a lighter note. Um, uh, since we know that there are aliens, do you think that they're here walking among us? Of course they are, yeah. And do they look like us? You see my sister. Uh, <laughs> <Ta -dun -dun>. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to see your no. sister <laughs> somebody's going to get girlfriend. slapped upside the head here. <laughs> girlfriend's definitely an alien oh. yeah. uh, <laughs> it was such a simple question <laughs> oh dear only telling the truth uh, yeah, no, they're, they're around. Yeah. But do they look like us? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Some do and some don't. Okay. Some cover it, you know, quite easy. You know, but, uh, you know, I mean, where do we come from? You know, we're talking about other people being aliens. So, but, you know, where do we come from? Yeah. Can they shape shift? Oh, hell, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, I was talking about shadow people. I've seen your advertisement on about shadow people. Mm -hmm. We're shadow people. My unit are shadow people. Really? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's the technology, what we use, right? When we get into trouble, if we get, you know, sort of like if there's heavy fire and we get, there's a, somebody's laying a lot of fire down at us and we're having a problem, you know, sort of like, and we need to get out of there. On my uniform, I'll press, I'll turn the dial and press a button and I'll disappear, right, yeah, to the naked eye. But there is, there's what you call a signature left behind and that is me, the outline, a silhouette. Now, what we can do is, the reason why we do this, we can ITL it, get out, if we sort of like in a forest, go through trees and, and get out, if you see what I mean, and we can go through solid objects. So it's a it's a form, of, a slow form of teleportation, if you see what I mean, because it is like, it, it's it's a teleportation system, but it, 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 but it's slowed down, so you can, you can go through solid objects to get out. You know, goose get out of easy. You know what I mean. So like, and then once you're away from the enemy, you know, sort of like you can, you know, call, you know, for backup, and sort of like, or get out of there. You know, sort of like uh, basically use the other teleportation system to go back to base. That's if <laughs> that's if if base are gonna let you, or unless they say you know you stay down there and you. You know, sort of like uh, you'll fight out, you know, to the end. Do what you're down there to do. So, so help me understand. So, is there, so now I'm kind of blending two different worlds here. Is there a possibility that when we go out and do investigations in remote locations and we see, shadow people or some type of entity that we can't describe could it possibly be an alien that we're seeing and not, not a spirit 
<laughs> just depends if there's some kind of underground base there. But it is a like I say that what you're seeing could well be us. Or I say us, another unit. Yeah. Because you know, they're not the only alien race that use that either, use that system. Right. I just was kind of start trying to draw some type of connection. Like what we go into an investigation for might not be really what we're experiencing necessarily. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. You might be stepping into you know, deep water. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, the, yeah. the thing is, seriously, right, yeah? I was talking about this on BBC Radio some years ago, and they were talking about abductions and people disappearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to them that there was, I think it was about 160,000 people that had been gone missing the year previous. Mm -hmm. And... The, the host of the show said, oh, no, I don't believe that. And I said, well, they can find out. I said, I, I rung up and I said it was like 160,000 last year. So one of their researchers got on and uh, had phoned Missing Persons uh, Bureau or whatever. And she came back and she, she said, no, it's actually more. This year, the the... You know, it was the year before I'd said, not the last year, but the year before last. She turned around, she says that um, we can't give you the statistics for this year because it's not the full year yet, you know what I mean? But we can give you last year's. Mm -hmm. And she said last year there was 180,000 people went missing. And this is on, in my country. This is an island, right? Yeah. And this is about this is ten years ago. This is ten years ago. Now, the numbers last year was two hundred and fifty thousand people went missing. And do these people are these people gone forever? Or are these people that reappear later? Well, we, you don't know, do you? That, that's a problem. Well, probably has <laughs> it would explain our voting system. <laughs> Precisely, yeah. Uh, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's scary, isn't it? You know, it is. It's you know where are the I mean, what she said was, well, she says um, they come back the next day. And I says, no, I said, because if you if your researcher would have told you the full story, you've got to be missing for 72 hours before you're registered as missing person. Right. You see? So it's like how many people are actually found? Yeah. And it is frightening. It's frightening. <laughs> Because the thing is, the thing is, every year, the numbers don't drop. You know? So it's like, you know, where are, where are all the people? And we're talking about some young children as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's frightening, but nobody nobody's that concerned because... If it doesn't concern you, doesn't matter. It's only when things start concerning people, you know, it's like crime or whatever, or sort of like um, no jobs and what have you, you know, sort of like bills and out of control, then people right. start talking. Right. You know, but unless it concerns them, concerns them they, they don't really bother. You know, so, yeah. I have an interesting theory question for you. The cryptids that I'm sure you probably heard about in the paranormal community, are those just interdimensional like beings or aliens that are here and gone and we get a glimpse and so we interpret them as being here, but they're not really here? Well, 
let's put it this way. Um, when we travel, we travel, like I said to you before, um, there's like two like balls of energy, like crystal balls. And then what happens is these tubes come up out of the ground in our base when we're going on a mission. And they come up and on the top, there's like one at the left hand side, one at the right hand side. And there's these like crystal balls and the power comes from the bottom all the way up the, these tubes or pillars to the, the balls. And then when it's powered up, the tubes go back into the ground. We cup our hands over the top or we used to. We, we don't no longer because but we used to. And that would take us straight through the, the doorway. And we would end up at this destination wherever we've been sent. Now, if you look on a lot of these um, programs on the television, I've been watching one tonight uh, about uh, Bigfoot and cryptos and what have you. And there's always balls of light seen in the forest. They can see these balls of light, can't they? There's always usually two balls of light. That's us traveling. When you see those balls of light, that means that usually we've actually arrived at our destination and those balls are going back, right, to our base in a split second, like so. Later on, they don't do that. They're going to backpack at the side later on. But when, when I was first taken 20, 30 years ago, they, they went back to base and then when we were getting out of the area, they'd come back within split seconds and take us back to base, to headquarters. So I can see similar similarities there. Again, by people saying, look at these balls of light, look at, and then when they get to the balls of light, then they've disappeared. Well, that's either because they've gone back to base or there might be an underground base there. And all the time I'm hearing people saying that there's underground bases in these areas where, you know, these Bigfoots are, are living or where something what I can't understand is, you know, I'm a big lad and I've seen some of these, <laughs> I've seen some of <laughs> they say, right, this is where the, the bed down for the night and what have you. And they've got like um, a, a, a shelter. And I'm thinking something what's supposed to be like 10 foot tall is in that. You know what I mean? <laughs> to me, it doesn't make any sense. I'm thinking, right. how does he get in? How does he get in there? <laughs> I couldn't get in there. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I just, wow. Yeah. When you mention underground bases, are those connected to the hollow earth and like with the ant people, or is that something totally separate? Well, yeah. you've got to look at the, the, the total history of, of this planet, right? Yeah. And when you're looking at the, like uh, some people say, the Bible. Um, Talmud, uh, you, you know, sort of like uh, other religions, and see where it all started from, you know, by these giants, these gods coming down and, you know, and then basically destroying the people and the planet. I remember I got the cane for asking a question. Uh, we're religious education, and she just told us about uh, Noah and Ark and everything, and you know, sort of like uh, animals going in two by two. And uh, and I, I said, did I, I forgot this right, miss? But what are you saying? That he doesn't like us and he, he, he's, he's killing us all as well. And the teacher turned around and says, go to the headmaster's office and get the cane. <laughs> but what for? You know, why? 
you know, sort of like I've asked a question. And the thing is, at the end of the day, right, yeah, God has been trying to get rid of us since day one. You know, yeah, the floods were there to, to drown us all. It won't rid of us. You know, sort of like and getting the cane for asking a simple question like this, absolutely disgraceful. But so it's a case of all the time, it seems like all around the world, no matter, you know, everybody in different religions seem to believe the same thing, that their gods had sort of like sent down wrath upon us right yeah to get rid of us and some people went and tried to to um go into caves and and sort of like these um tunnel systems and you know so that could be the thing if it if it didn't only happen over here in this country in america europe asia africa that means that would the people have all done this had the same you know sort of like um instinct you know sort of like and to to go and to build you know dig and go underground you know i mean the same people if you look at it all around the world have built the same structures which are pyramids whether it's in you know south america Africa, Europe, Eastern Europe, England, China, Russia, the finding pyramids. So again, there's a link there. So the thing is, yeah, you know, they probably have. I know that there is underground bases. Believe me, there is underground. There's one just where I live here, where the two flying triangles come out of the sea, out of the bay. You know, they're not coming out of the bay for nothing, have they? They've been, you know, sort of like doing something under under the sea. So, yeah, the, the answer is, yeah, that there is definitely people, you know, there's other civilizations that are supposed to have been lost, you know. There's not only, what do they say, Atlantis? Mm -hmm. What's that other one called? Is it Mo? Mew and Lemuria. Yeah, and then there's um, uh, another... Um, place this mystical place near ireland that uh, pops up every every seven years or or whatever you know that's uh um a, a place a mystic you know sort of like ireland that uh, does that you know i, I forgot the name of the damn uh, i forgot the name of it now but uh Sounds like Avalon, but I know it's not Avalon. No, it's not. That's supposed to be here, Avalon. You know, Isle of Apples and, and, and what have you. Um, somebody connected it with uh, the ad contact and, and the, the, the drawn a load of circles and, and uh, the, the said it had something to do with that or something. Um, I Brazil, is it? I Brazil, I think. I Brazil, that's the one. Yeah, I Brazil. Okay. But, well, uh, I hate to cut you off, Russ, but we're actually no problem. No problem. Like half hour over. I just well, I'm wanted... sorry about the the problem. Uh, yeah, obviously, this computer is better than uh, the one I was using. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But we appreciate you hanging in there with us and getting it yeah. fixed and. We will definitely have to have you come back on and continue this because this Absolutely. is fascinating. Mm -hmm. I, never and... told, I never told you the start of it, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, never mind. But thank you um, for having us on, uh, Carla. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where can people go to see your stuff and your books? Um, you can go to Amazon. Uh I've got a book out called E.T. Rider and one called um, Invasion Whale, Alien Invasion Whales. And if you have a look for us on, I think, uh, Flying Saucer Television 
and UFO Paranormal TV on uh, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel there, and it shows your videos what I've filmed, and a couple of my friends have filmed some good stuff as well. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to have you back. Yes. Looking forward to it. And uh, like I say, sorry about the problems, uh, what I had there. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> It's the fun of having live shows. That's right. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It is. It yeah. is. But uh, thank you for having us on your show. It's been great. Thank you thank so you. much. Take care. You too. Good night. God bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. So that, that was fun. Yeah. yeah Switching gears every few minutes. That's okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, really interesting at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, hey, Matt, you just caught us wrapping up. We're just finishing. You'll unfortunately have to catch it in the replay. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> <Good night>, Catherine. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yep. Good night, Catherine. And <laughs> Stephen, thank you for coming in and yep. chatting. And to all our guests. And, and with our viewers. everything that's going on, we actually will be off next week as I will be on a mini vacation. Well deserved. And well deserved, sir. Thank you. As long as weather holds. <laughs> then we will be back next week. <laughs> yeah. If we get iced in, yep, you might see us next week. Yeah. But you never know. Yeah. But all good. Let's see. And then I when I come, come back, back from on vacation, Valentine's Day, right? I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I said I think we come back on Valentine's Day, right? We do. Little hearts. And little hearts. The <laughs> guest for that show, if you haven't caught it, is actually the host of Paranormal Verses, which I am co-host of Yay. every other Thursday. So That'll be cool. That'll be fun to have both people that I co-host with in one show. <laughs> It'll be a fun show. I'll be out number two to one, so that ought to make it real fun. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> I will definitely be kept in line for that show. <laughs> All righty. Well, you have an excellent vacation next week. Thank you. Take lots of pictures. I'm sure I will. Yep, Catherine, it's going to be a party. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Howard. Hey, Howard. Howard is the host of the Petri Dish, if you want to catch that on our network. <laughs> and so I will say good night from our show. Yep. Have fun. Be safe and always make sure you love that <laughs> evidence because you never know what you're going to find. I figured you were going to say something like, always look to the stars or something. Uh, well, you know, yeah, <laughs> I could do, I, you know, I don't know if it's copyrighted and if I can say it, but the Kid Craddock show always had a really cool send off. Which is? Keep looking up because that's where it all is. There you go. <laughs> that covers a lot. Yeah. All the so, energy that surrounds us. <laughs> da -da -da. <laughs> so keep your eyes open and keep your energy fields, you know, intact because you never know what's around you. Good Have night, a good everyone. Night, everyone. <laughs> We'll see you in a couple weeks. Yep. Good night. Good night.